Okay. Now we're going to be looking at what we call analysis of variances, okay? Analysis of variance, which in short, we call it ANOVA. Basically, analysis is, that's what we had the first two letters. That's analysis of variances. So ANOVA, we're going to complete and we're going to interpret the results of our ANOVA here, analysis of variances. The data that we're going to be using is this table here on the on my right, okay? The data and the table at the right resulted from an experiment that utilized a completely randomized design. We're gonna use a statistical software. I'm gonna use um, Excel, the program Excel, to calculate the formula, to calculate the, the table below, to fill out the table below, okay? So first of all, on my degrees of freedom, there's two types of degrees of freedom, my treatments, my first thing is I'm going to see, look at my treatments. I see I have treatment one, I have treatment two, and I have treatment three. There are three different treatments. So my degrees of freedom is going to be two. It's going to be one less of the amount of treatments that I have. Again, there's three of them. So my degrees of freedom for treatments will be two. If there were nine of them, my degrees of treatment will be eight. My, my degrees of freedom for treatments is always one less. Now for my degrees of freedom for my error, so I'm gonna look at my data. I see my list here, there are five numbers. Right, I see my list here has five numbers. So my degrees of freedom from this list is gonna be four. Again, one less. On my second treatment, on this list, I see there's four numbers. So my degrees of freedom will be three. Again, one less. And looking at this last list, there are three numbers. So my degrees of freedom from that one will be two. Again, one less. Now let me add my, my degrees of freedom, four plus three plus two. So my degrees of freedom from my error happened to be nine. So my degrees of freedom, my total degrees of freedom will be 11. Okay, so that's not that bad. That's not that hard. Now I'm gonna be using Excel for the rest. Now, let me look for my sum of the squares for my treatment and for my error. So what I'm going to do, let me come here. Let me put my list. I my my list. My first number was three point nine. So I'm gonna put my numbers here: one point two, four point four, five point eight, and one point six. So I copy my numbers from my first list. So a matter of fact, let me leave three spaces in between. Now let me take a look at my second list. It was five point nine. 2.2, 4.2, And my third list, let me leave three numbers, three spaces in between. My third list was 1.4, 0 0.7, and 2.1. 1.4, 0.7, 2.1. Okay, again, all I did was I copied down my list. Let me do the average of each of them. I'm going to need my average for each. So to notate, I'm going to write average here. So I, we know how to do average, right? I'm just going to add all my numbers, 3.9 plus 1.2 plus 4.4 plus 5.8 plus 1.6, and I'm going to divide it by 5 because there's 5 of them. But I'm going to use technology, so I'm going to go equals. Every time I do the equal sign, I start with an equal sign, I'm telling Excel that it's going to operate something, okay? So I'm going to go average. I'm going to write the word average. I'm going to open parentheses, and let me highlight my numbers. Close parentheses, and then it gives me my average is 3.38. Again, we could have added them all, 3.9 plus 1.2 plus 4.4 plus 5.8 plus 1.6 divided by 5. Well, I just had the, com the computer 
do it for us. Let me take a look at my second list. I'm going to do my average. I highlight my numbers, close parentheses. My average is four. And lastly, I'm going to do the average Now here at the side, here at the side, let me do the average of all of them. I will be using the average of all of them later. So I'm gonna do equal sign, average. Now here, I'm actually gonna list all my numbers. Put a comma. Notice how I put a comma and then I click on the number that I'm gonna add. Okay, so I look at my numbers there. I separate it with a comma. You notice how I separate with a comma. They're all highlighted, so good. I want to do it, close my parentheses. And my average of all of them is 3.091667. Okay, now do me a favor. Do not get the average of these three numbers. I'm going to show you guys why not. Watch. Let me do average. This numbered with this numbered and this number. Do not do the average of those three because, look, the result is different. Like I said, don't do that. Now, why is the number different? Because each list is different length. If they were all the same length, Okay, our averages will be the same. So, okay, let me let me remind you guys, don't do the average of these three numbers. Instead, for this average of all, do include all your numbers. Now, what I'm going to do, let me subtract each of these three averages. Let me subtract it minus, so each of this average minus the average of all of them. Okay, so let me come here. Then I'm going to write, so I'm going to go equals this average minus the overall average. Okay, let me do that. Let me do that to each of these. So this average minus the overall average. And lastly, this third average minus the overall average, okay? Now, what I'm going to do, each of these th new numbers, let me multiply by itself. Okay, so I'm going to go equals. The way I'm going to multiply by itself, I'm going to click the number, and I'm going to press times. It looks like a start. It's right on, on eight, and then I'm going to click that box again. So it's squ I squared it, okay? Now I'm going to go equals this number times this box right here. So I click it twice. And lastly, equals this times this. So again, I did the average of each of my list. And I did the average of all of them. I subtracted each average minus the average of all. And then I squared the results. Okay, now I'm going to get my, my sum of the squares for treatment. So looking at our, on our notes, let me come back to our notes. Where are my notes? Here. So sum of the squares for treatment. I'm ready to get my sum of the squares for treatment. Okay, so let me come back to my list here. Okay, I'm going to do equals here. So let me go sum of the squares for my treatment. I want to do equal. Okay, so now on my first list, there's five numbers, right? So I'm going to go five times this number. Okay, so I got five because there were five numbers times that plus. Now looking at my second list, there's four numbers, right? So I'm going to type in four times 
here, this squared, that, and then plus on my third list, there's three numbers, right? I'm gonna go three times this number. I press equal, and that is my sum of the squares for my treatment. So 12.30117. My instructions do say to round it to three decimal places. So here, this thing is not rounding. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna, when I write it, I'm gonna round it to three decimal places. I'm gonna write 12.301, okay? So let me come back to my notes here. So this is gonna be 12.301. Now my sum of the squares for my error, okay? Now let me figure that out. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do from each of my list, and this is actually why I left some space in between. I'm gonna go here next and I'm gonna press equal, I'm gonna do this number, so this 3.9 minus the average of that list, okay? So let me do that to each of these numbers. I'm gonna go this numbered minus the average of that list. Let me do it to all of my numbers. So this number minus the average of that list. And lastly, this number minus the average of that list. Let me go down to the other side. Press equal. Notice how each time I press equal. And then I'm gonna go this number minus the average of the list. And then this number minus the average of the list. And lastly, this number minus the average of the list. And then up here, this number minus the average of the list. This number minus the average of the list. And lastly, this number minus the average of the list. Okay, now each of these numbers, I'm gonna square each of those numbers. So let me come here, I'm gonna go equals this number times itself. This number times itself. So I'm squaring each of my numbers. The cool thing is that all my numbers are gonna be positive now because when you square a number, it becomes positive. Mm. So this number times itself. This number times itself, zero times zero, zero. Okay, makes sense. This number times this number, so itself. And then lastly, this number times this number. Now, let me add all the, the numbers that I, keep, I did. So I'm gonna get this numbered plus this numbered. Notice how when I click on it, the computer does put a little color around it. So it lets me know that I'm using it. I know not a plus, right? I added all my numbers there, so. Okay, so do notice that when I started, I put in equals, that tells the computer I'm gonna do a math operation. And then I added all my numbers. Notice how I put a plus in between each of those. Now that is 
my sum of the squares of my error, 23.048. So here, I'm gonna go 23.048. Okay, now my sum of the squares total, I'm gonna add these numbers, 12.301 plus 23.048. So that's gonna give me 35.349. Okay, now up here. What I'm going to do, do for each of these, my MS, what I'm gonna do is my sum of the squares divided by the degrees of freedom. So here, I'm gonna go 12.301 divided by two, 23.048 divided by nine. Now, each of these numbers, I know it's rounded and I don't wanna round my answer. So let me come here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna press equal. This number, remember that's my sum of the square of treatment, divided by my degrees of freedom, so it gives me two. So that's my MS for my treatment. Then I'm gonna go this number divided by nine, right? I'm doing nine because I'm doing my degrees of freedom. So that one gives me this number. Now, remember, if I as long as I use technology, I'm not running anything. So here, I know I have to write my answer, my, my answer, I have to run it to three decimal places. So for the first one, I'm gonna write 6.151, okay? So I'm gonna run it to three decimal places. For my second answer, I'm gonna go 2.561, okay? Each of my answers to three decimal places. So let's come here. Then I'm going to say for my treatment, it was 6.151. And for my error was 2.561. My, my F statistic is basically this number, the one for treatment, divided by the one for error, okay? So let me come back to my Excel because I use this as a calculator. So I'm gonna go equals this number divided by this number. So my F statistic, when I run it to three decimal places, I'm gonna call it two point four zero two so two point four zero two okay now here let me continue here i complete my chart here so now we're going to test the null hypothesis that u1 u2 and u3 the pro the the mean of each of my treatments is pretty similar, where it says UI represents the true mean for treatment I. So basically U1, U2, U3, against the alternative that at least two of the means are different. We're gonna use our alpha to be 0 0.01. Now determine the test statistic, my F value, my F statistic, I already have it from the table. It is gonna be two, point four zero two you guys see where i got it from right so two point four zero two now i gotta determine my p value okay now let me determine my p value let me okay for the p value we're going to be using this website that i gave you guys last week so for this website I'm gonna say, okay, my F ratio, when I get the numbers from our table that we just filled, our F ratio was our F statistic is 2.402. My degrees of freedom, first thing was treatments. My degrees of freedom for treatments was two. 
my degrees of freedom for the denominators and my degrees of freedom for my error was was nine. And when I use 0 0.01 as my alpha, and let me calculate this. I press calculate. And there's my p-value. My p-value is 0 0.146, right? I'm gonna run it to three decimal places. So 0 0.146. That's it begin with 0 0.146. Now I have to say here, it says determine the conclusion of the test. I'm gonna reject it. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna reject the null hypothesis. I, I left it here. There's there's insufficient evidence to indicate differences among the means, but let me tell you guys why I am not rejecting the null hypothesis. I have my p-value and I have my, my alpha. Which one's bigger? My alpha is 0 0.01, right? And my p-value is 0 0.146. So that means my p-value is bigger. Because my p-value is bigger than alpha, then I'm not going to reject my null hypothesis. If my alpha was bigger, I would have said, okay, reject the null hypothesis. And the funny thing is that here on our calculator, it even told us when we got the p-value, it says the result is not significant. So p less than zero, uh, 0 0.01. Our p-value is bigger than, than alpha, so we're not gonna re, we're not gonna reject the null hypothesis. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Let's continue with our notes. Now I'm gonna look at another example. But now here, let's say, can a secondary test such as word association task improve your performance when driving while fatigued? This was the question of interest in the study. Okay, so we're wondering. If when you're tired and you're driving, if you do something else, can this help you while driving? Okay. The researchers use a driving simulator to obtain their data. Each of 40 college students was assigned to drive a long distance in the simulator. So we have 40 people doing this study. However, the student drivers were divided into four groups of 10 drivers each. Group one performed the verbal, verbal task continuously. So here we see continuous verbal. There's some numbers there. So people kept on talking. Group two performed the task only at the end of the drive. So late verbal condition. So late verbal, they start talking towards the end. They were quiet at the beginning. They start talking later. Group three did not perform the task at all. So no verbal condition. So group three, they were not talking at all. So group one, talking the whole time. Group two, talking later in the drive, but quiet at the beginning. Group three, no talking at all. And group four was listening to a program on their car radio. So they were listening to the radio station. Okay, so at the end of the simulated drive, drivers were asked to recall billboards that they saw along the way. The percentage of billboards recall by each student driver is provided in the table below. Determine if the mean recall percentage differs from student drivers in the four groups. We're going to test using our alpha to be 0 0.01. Okay. So we're the question here was, do you remember the billboards? Okay. So here are the percentages of billboards that each of these persons saw. So this is going to be my data. Okay. So let me come to my calculator. Let me create my data here. All right. So my numbers I'm gonna write are from the data that we saw. So the my first list was 16, 65, 12, 31, 39, 62, 45, 6, 38 and 49. This is group one. Let me leave three spaces in between. Group two was 61, 68, 
70, 22, 99, 56, 62, 118, 89, and 51. Let me leave three spaces in between. My third list is 66, 85, 56, 61, 62, 41, 58, 75, 80, and 75. Let me leave three spaces in between. My third list, let's see, is 36, 44, 86, 61, 13, 45, 58, 44, 44, and 23. Okay, I have my my four groups. Let me come back here. And I'm going to do average. So I'm going to type in equals, average, open parentheses, and I'm going to get the average of all these. I'm going to do equals, average, all these. Average, so I'm doing the average of each of my lists. So I'm going to say from the first group, when they were talking the whole time, they remember about 36% of the billboards. When they were quiet at the beginning, but then they started talking later, they remembered almost 70% of the billboards. Not bad. When they were talking none at all, so it was all quiet, they remember about 66% of all the billboards. Now, when they were listening to the radio, they remembered about 45% of the of the billboards. Okay. Now, my question is, is there real is there a significant difference between my averages here? Okay. So we'll take a look at it a minute. So let's come back to my notes here. My degrees of freedom. Okay, so I had four groups, right? I had four groups. So I'm going to say my degrees of freedom between the groups is three. Remember, I always go one less. Now, my degrees of freedom within the groups, my, de my er if we can say my error, let me come back to my list here. There are 10 people here, right? There's 10 people on my first list. So my degrees of freedom from this list is going to be 9. Remember, I always go one less. On uh, my second list, there's 10 people. So my degrees of freedom is 9. Again, always go one less. On my third one, there's 10 people. So my degrees of freedom is 9. And then this last one, there's 10 people. So my degrees of freedom is nine. Now add all of the degrees of freedom from each of my lists, so within the groups, and my degrees of freedom will be 36. My total degrees of freedom will be 39 because I added those numbers. Okay, my sum of the squares between my groups. Okay, so let me come back to my calculator here. Okay, so I got the average of all of these, right? What is the average of all of them? Now, one thing, different to the questions before, I could do the average of all of the numbers on the list, but instead here I'm gonna do the average of these four numbers only. Fifty-four point three. So that's the average of all of them. 
Okay. Earlier, earlier, I had to hide. I had to click on each of these numbers. But now on this one, let me highlight. I just did the average of these four numbers. The average of my averages. Now you might be wondering why do you not do it on the previous question, but you do it on this question. Now the reason why is because each of my list have the same number of elements. My list have the same length. On well, my previous question, they were not. So when they are the same length, we can do that. We, for, for me to find out the average of my whole data, I'm just gonna do an average of the averages. When my list has different length, each list, then I cannot do that, right? I mentioned it in the previous question, but what I'm gonna do now, what I'm gonna do now, let me, each of my numbers, I'm gonna go equals this number minus the average of this list, okay? So that number minus the average of the list. Now, one thing, it would be nice if I could just copy all this, right? But we can. What I'm gonna do here, this blue number, this blue box, I want it to go down on each of these. Now, this red box, I want to lock. So I'm gonna do D. I'm gonna use the money sign with 35. That means I'm locking it. And look, I just drag here. Nice. Right, it's each number minus that. With the with the money sign, you lock it. So let me go here. I want to say I want this numbered minus this numbered, but I want this sixty nine point six to be locked. So I'm gonna put H and then money sign. So money signs with the number. Cool. That is pretty cool right there. I'm gonna do the same to this. Oh, I want the money signed here to lock. Notice I put it after the letter. So L money sign 35. I'm gonna go this minus this average, but with the money sign after the letter, you see, after P. And then I'm gonna do each of these numbers squared. So this number times itself. And then look, let me just drag this. Boom, it squared each of these numbers. I love Excel because it does that. So this number times itself. I go down my list. This number times itself. And lastly, this number times itself. Okay, now these numbers right here is what we call variance. Let me do something really quick. Let me add my variances. Let me add my variances for this list. I'm gonna go sum, open parentheses. I highlight my numbers that I'm gonna add. This right here I'm gonna use in a minute. You guys might be wondering, why is he doing all this right now? I'll use it. I want all my information to be ready. That way I'm gonna use it later. Okay, now coming back to my averages. Remember this list at the bottom, let me highlight this. I'm gonna say this is average. This is the average of each of my list. And this last number is my average of all my data. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go for each of these, I'm gonna go my average minus the overall average. 
So let me do this really quick. This average minus my overall average. This average minus my overall average. And oops. Oh, I erased this. I'm going to do this really quick. So I'm going to go this average minus my overall average. Okay, cool. Now I want to go and I want to say this number times itself. So I'm going to square each of these. See, 11.6 times 11.6, and then this negative 8.9 times negative 8.9. So multiply by itself. Cool. Now I'm going to use this last numbers at the very bottom. I'm going to type in, so I'm going to press equal. Looking at my first list, how many numbers are there in the list to begin with? There were 10, right? So I'm going to go 10 times this number. So I'm dealing with my averages right now. Remember here on each of this, this is the average of the whole list. This is the average minus the overall average. So basically 36.3 minus 54.3. And then this is squared. Okay, so I did 10 times that plus. Now I go down to my second list. Notice I haven't finished here. So my second list, there's 10 numbers times this. Now I press plus. On my third list, there's 10 numbers times this. And then plus on my fourth list, there's 10 numbers times this. And that is my sum of the squares between my groups. So let me come back to my notes here. Round to three decimal places as needed. Here I'm going to write 7,718.6. Right, that's what I got. Now... Board. Let me just come here. And I'm going to say, okay, let me do this number. Remember how I got this list earlier? So this number plus this number plus this number plus this number. That is my sum of the squares within my groups. Okay. So I come here and I get 15,439.8. Now, when I add these two, my total will be 23,158.4. Now, for my MS, here, I'm going to go my sum of the squares divided by degrees of freedom. So for this first one, the one I have circle, I have to go 7,718.6 divided by 3. For my second one here, I'm going to go 15,439.8 divided by 36. So let me use my calculator here. And I'm going to say, okay, for the first one, I have to go this one divided by three. For the second one, I'm going to say this one divided by 36, because that's my degrees of freedom. Now, I have to round each to three decimal places. So I'm going to say 2,572.867. And then 428.883. Good. So let me come back here. 
I'm going to say 2,572.867. And then here I have 428.883. I'm not going to do the total. Now, what, now for my F statistic, I'm going to go this numbered divided by this number. So 2,572.867 divided by 428.883. Let me come back here. And I'm going to say, OK, I have to go equals this number divided by this other number. So my F statistic, when I run it to three decimal places, will be 5.999. So my F statistic is gonna be 5.999. Okay, now when I continue reading, it says determine the test statistic. It's 5.999. Now determine the p-value. Okay, so we have to go to the website that I gave you guys earlier. Let me close this ad. So I'm gonna close. Okay, so now I have this, my F ratio, remember it was 5.999. My degrees of freedom for the, between the groups, it was three. My degrees of freedom within the groups was 36. And I believe we're doing 0 0.01. Yep, my, we're testing this at 0 0.01. So let me calculate my P value. My p-value, let me run it to three decimal places. I'm going to call it 0 0.002. Okay, so my, my p-value is 0 0.002. Now determine the conclusion of the test. So I have my p-value, remember, 0 0.002. Have my alpha, remember my alpha is 0. 0, 1. Which one is bigger? Well, alpha. Now, because alpha is bigger, then in this case, I do reject the null hypothesis. So I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis was that there's not much of a difference between the averages of each list. So we, we're like, yeah, there is. So we're going to reject it. Now there is sufficient. When we reject uh, the null hypothesis, we have sufficient evidence to indicate that at least two of the mean percentages of the billboards of the mean percentages of the billboards recalled From the four groups, 
deferred. So basically it means they're different. Okay, there you go.